dear children. Oh, you poor, poor children. My poor neglected creations. As you know, it is not often that I make direct contact with you. Not in this way, at least. Typically, I have chosen to convey important messages through the mouthpieces of prophets, messengers, angels, dreams. I thought about sending a mass email, but I didn't want to risk it winding up in your spam folder. Because this is a very urgent message, and I feel that you need to hear it directly from me to know that my apology is sincere. I have given it much thought, and I am confident that this medium is the optimal way for me to clear up so much of the misinformation and myths about love that have condemned so many of you to abject misery and, frankly, emotional torture. For those of you who are aware, not aware of the situation, which has reached a crisis level, I feel it's best to play for you just a minuscule sample of the trillions of prayers and cries I receive daily to demonstrate just how dire this crisis is at the moment. What you are about to hear may be a little disturbing, and for that reason, I strongly advise that children and highly sensitive people turn this off now. I recommend that if you are easily distressed, that you read the transcript instead. children, my beloved, precious children, is why I come before you now and beg for your forgiveness. I have been a horrible, awful, horrendous parent. I had a duty to protect you and I failed. It was my responsibility to provide for you, and I was stingy and lax. You were looking to me for guidance and assistance, and I deprived you of that. So I confess that I am guilty of gross negligence and dereliction of my duties as your creator and guardian. Whatever pain you have suffered is due entirely to my laziness, incompetence, vindictiveness, and my own personal insecurities. For all the pain I've caused you, I am deeply, infinitely, Sorry. I know that apologies are only a starting point and count for nothing unless one makes a drastic change in one's behavior and 
One does everything within one's power to make amends and set the situation aright. And that is why I felt it necessary to issue a PSA about the true nature of romantic, companionate love. About soulmates, kindred spirits, twin flames, kindred souls, or whatever else you may call them these days, let me just say that in relation to this matter, I feel like a failure. I am a complete failure. More than that, I'm a phony, a fraud, an imposter. If I could figure out how to resign, I would even know how to submit my resignation and whom to submit it to. Besides, it would be a dick move for me to totally abandon you all now. This planet has about 50 years tops left. Some of that within your control, even if I'm the only one with access to the gold codes, so looks like it's going to be less, less than 50 years, and, and when it's gone, jeesh, what are the history books going to say about me? I'll be more hated than Bill Cosby or Jeffrey Epstein, or Delphine Lalaurie, or Timothy Vigay, or Elizabeth Bathory. It's not going to be a glowing review. So, naturally, I have many, many regrets. But my biggest regret was my blase attitude towards love. Originally, initially, in the beginning, I wanted to go down as the god of nothing but love and light, and I touted myself as love incarnate. I even promoted the slogan, God is love. And if that wasn't hypocritical enough, I ordered, commanded, all of you to love. My most emphasized commandment was to love. To love me, to love one another, to love your neighbors, to love your enemies. But I failed to give to you all the abilities, tools, and resources you'd need to fulfill that commandment. And to be painfully honest, I deliberately withheld them from you. I set you up for failure. I intentionally sabotaged your ability to love each other. allowed love to be taken over by commercial interests, advertisers, pop singers, greeting card companies, candy makers, so no one could truly experience what love has to offer. I was withholding and made love scarce. I could lie and say that I didn't want to be an overindulgent parent who spoils her kids by giving them everything they ever wanted all at once. But in actuality, I just wanted you to stay dependent on me. 
I let homophobia go on for way longer than I should have, for example. I had the power to nip that kind of hate mongering in the bud by explicitly issuing a statement early on that love is love, that all love is holy and good. So, because I didn't do that for millennia, millions upon millions of people were prevented from living the love they deserved, all because of my ego, my insecurities. And yes, there's more. A lot more. Shamefully, I deliberately deprived those who are exceptionally good at loving of enough money to focus on living their best love. I made sure many lovers couldn't be together because of money. You're probably so disgusted with me right now that you can't bear to hear any more. But I feel that you should know everything. Please, hear me out. I know that I have been a horrible creator from nearly the beginning. But to my credit... I can hardly blame a couple of teenagers for my egregious behavior. I did try, I really did try to be the most loving parent with Adam. I got it right that time. Creation. I got it right when I created him and to some extent Eve. I created Adam with the utmost love and care. I mean, with Adam, I gave him so much one-on-one -on -one time. I took the time to teach him about love, everything I knew about love. Adam had a good teacher. It took some, some thought to figure out how to transfer that knowledge that was just intuition for me. You know, no one had to teach me how to love. I, just had it, I just knew it, because I am love. But I taught him love by showing him love. Since love is listening, Adam and I spent a lot of time walking and talking, and I mostly listened. crafted a beautiful human being and then I designed a perfect match for him. I realize now, hell, I knew it all along, that one-to-one -one correspondence is the only way to do creation. Design one person, you know, their likes, dislikes, preferences, personality, their life mission. And then before doing anything else, design a perfect match for that person. Making sure that they aren't going to drive each other crazy and can meet each other's needs. But oh no. No, I let my anger about Adam and Eve consume me. I let my bruised ego get the best of me and I took my pain out on every single human who I created after Eve. It's not the original sin thing. It was the soulmate issue. After Adam and Eve, I really thought I'd made a mistake. I was so jaded about soulmate love after that experience. I mean, that soulmate coalition conspired and rebelled against me, their creator. So I saw to it that that was never going to happen again, and it didn't. There's never been a power couple on that level ever since. 
I'm proud to say. Not Jay-Z and Beyonce, not Kim and Kanye, not Anthony and Cleopatra, not Ross and Rachel, or Hillary and Bill. What am I saying? That's nothing to be proud of. I was grieving, so to distract myself, I got fixated on new challenges. For a long time, it was all about numbers, growth, seeing the population explode exponentially. This is a huge planet, the biggest I've ever tinkered with, and I just wanted to see if I could fill it up. I even went through a period where I did everything to make sure Eve would never have any sway over Adam. I disarmed her by letting men marry as many women as they wanted, and that went on for hundreds of years. It was great for reaching my population targets, but there weren't a lot of soulmate matches. I'm sure you haven't heard of many. So. So we arrived at our current crisis. Somehow you humans muddled through all those thousands of years without soulmates. I guess it's because you had your tribes, your huge families, your crippling struggles with basic life, survival issues to keep you preoccupied. But no, here we are now, and so many of you kids are so depressed, so anxious, that it's unbearable, even for me, it's so heartbreaking to hear the desperate prayers. Just imagine being flooded with those day and night non-stop. How was I supposed to know that the 20th and 21st centuries would be plagued by so much loneliness? social isolation and angst, and so much intense fixation on finding a soulmate to such an intense degree that not, not many of you seem able to accomplish much else. I've been around since the beginning, and this is by far the worst it has ever been. The soulmate sulking, the soulmate obsession. The torment that most of you are feeling because you believe you must find but can't find your soulmate. It's especially sad because I created a lot of really quality people in this patch. So many really creative, talented humans. But because so many of you are grieving for your lost soulmate, not using those talents, you're not using those resources. Instead, you're crying over your missing half. Crying because you feel so incomplete. But the brutal reality is, look, I just have to fess up and be honest. I messed up. I didn't create anyone specifically for anyone else, so any so-called soulmate matches are just sheer accidents, sometimes really suggestible and open-hearted or open-minded and easygoing, naturally giving lovers happen upon each other. Sometimes people with similar interests and senses of humor collide, despite all the obstacles I've thrown in their way. And there are just some flexible, very flexible, and gracious people who are naturally capable of making space in their lives for a whole nother person. I know this is going to sting as badly as having the Santa Claus band-aid ripped off when you were eight. But it doesn't have to be a painful experience. And be liberating. Are you ready? Brace yourself. The truth is, there aren't any half people.
people walking around down there. I swear. I swear to myself. That reminds me. I really gotta create someone or something I can be held accountable to, like a board of directors or something. Anyway, there aren't any missing pieces, no half people or incomplete souls, just lonely people. Because I didn't design anyone just for you, and I messed up a bunch of other stuff too. And I know I have a lot of tears on my hands. A lot of loveless people are walking around berating and hating on themselves because they feel cheated or cursed or like they did something wrong, or they're defective, or they aren't worthy of a soulmate. The truth is, you are worthy of love. You are worthy of love. And there is nothing defective about you. I, God, just didn't create a very special, special love, specifically for you. If it makes you feel any better, and it should, I'm the reason you haven't found your so-called soulmate. Look, I'm sorry. Very, very deeply sorry. I'm older now. Wiser. My anger has had some time to simmer down. You get older and you develop a different perspective on things. And that's where I am right now. So I do hope that you'll accept my apology. I hope you'll reflect on what I've shared with you. The truth about soulmates. And that you'll find healing and freedom in accepting this absolute truth. thing. I want you to know that starting today, or maybe tomorrow, I'm going to do everything I can to amend this situation. I'm going to assemble a team of angels for brainstorming sessions, and hopefully we can get ready to launch an intensive troubleshooting operation. And I vow to keep you updated on our progress. Also, to compensate you for your pain and suffering, I'm sending you all some coupons for 20% off of bath and spa products so you can treat yourself to a pamper day. You know, so you can practice some back to basics, good old fashioned self. Thank you for listening, for your compassion. I'll keep you updated. But for now, please just have a pleasant, restorative, calming night's sleep. And I, I sincerely believe Things will be illuminated for you, and you'll get clarity and experience an inner transformation that will point you in the right direction for moving forward. Sweet dreams. Yes.
Ana María Bueno, ¿qué tal?